Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lab 207 webcast. I am Mr. Kite, I will be your guide for the day, and we continue on in our little series about cells with the cell membrane. So, you'll have to forgive me, it's been a long day, my classroom is currently about 82 degrees, and I'm struggling a bit, so hopefully this goes alright. We're going to start out with our objectives, like always, and they are as follows. First of all, describe the fluid mosaic model. Second one, to explain how the plasma membrane maintains fluidity and differentiate between membrane proteins. Oh, sneaky. Number four, relate membrane structure to selective permeability. So let's get on into it with the fluid mosaic model. Now, like it says down there at the bottom, it's all about movement. Usually we think of membranes as being fairly, not rigid, but static, meaning that they don't change very much. They might wave in and out a little bit, but they don't really do a whole lot of movement. Scientists have discovered that the cell membrane actually has got a whole lot of movement going on in it. I'm going to try very poorly to illustrate this here, but as you can see, you've got all of these phospholipids right here. You've got a little cholesterol molecule. You've got proteins through it. Think of this as being almost like a tub full of ping pong balls with water underneath. So this would be like the water, all of our ping pong balls are floating around on top. They can jostle, they can move, they can trade places kind of like this, side to side. All of these little proteins, they can meander like rafts through this membrane. So it's not like the proteins are stuck in place. This guy does not stay there forever. He might be here, and then he rafts on over here, and then maybe this guy moves like this. Think of it as a crowd at a concert. As you move through that crowd, you kind of elbow your way through and squeeze through and squeeze past people until you end up at the front of the stage where you want to be. Think of all the little phospholipids as concert goers. They're constantly elbowing around each other to move throughout the membrane. So it is called the fluid mosaic model because one, it's fluid. It is always changing. And mosaic, think of those Italian art pieces that are a bunch of broken up tiles all put together into a nice little picture. So phospholipids is being one type of tile. Our proteins being another type of tile. Um, cholesterol is being another type of tile. And so on and so forth. So let's talk about how the membrane maintains its fluidity because if our membrane is not fluid, then it gets packed together and we cease to be able to move. So first thing is generally speaking, as membranes cool down, phospholipids start to pack together and as they pack together, they become a lot less mobile. If they're not mobile, that means that our cell membrane loses flexibility and we're no longer able to move. Now, there are a couple of ways that membrane fluidity is maintained. The first one is unsaturated phospholipids. So some membranes have got a pretty high proportion of unsaturated phospholipids. And as you learned in our last, or not last, but a couple of videos back, unsaturated fats have got those kinked tails that prevent them from packing together. So that's one way that our membranes stay fluid when it cools down. Second one is cholesterol. Now cholesterol works when it gets cold and when it gets too hot. As the membrane cools down and those phospholipids start to pack together, the cholesterol molecules keep them from packing together all the way. So they have to remain just a little bit fluid. On the other end of things, when it gets too hot and those phospholipids start to move around too quickly, the cholesterol absorbs some of their energy and slows them down. So cholesterol is a big deal when it comes to keeping our membrane fluid and stable. Now, membrane proteins, and there are many of them, have all kinds of different functions. And I could not possibly hope to go through all of them in depth. So I've got just a quick little overview for you. And I'm just going to underline them as I go through them. So first one is anchoring. Proteins in the cell membrane can anchor to other cells. They can anchor to incoming um, molecules. Anchors, they hold things in place. Second thing they can do is they can function in passive transport, which is essentially just serving as a little channel for things to move through into or out of the cell. They can serve as active transport molecules, which means that they act like a little pump that pumps things into the cell and out of the cell. They can act as enzymes, which means that they speed up reactions. They can act in signal transduction, which means that as a signal comes to the cell, it docks with the protein, and that protein kind of transmits the signal telephone style to the inside of the cell. 
they can function in helping cells to recognize each other and they can serve as intercellular junctions which you can think of as being like little tubes that let cells pass messages back and forth. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different functions for membrane proteins. And I guarantee there are many more kinds of membrane proteins than there are categories of function. The other thing that I want you to know about membrane proteins is there are two basic categories that they all can be divided into, integral and peripheral. Now, this is just about where they're placed on the cell membrane. If they go all the way through the cell membrane, like this guy, they are integral. They have been integrated into the membrane. If they just sit on top, like this one right here, it is peripheral. He is on the periphery. So that category or that list of categories of protein functions that I just went through, all of those would be integral proteins. They go all the way across the cell membrane. Another thing that the cell membrane works in is cell-to-cell -cell recognition. This is kind of like the outside coating on the cell, so it is the first thing that other cells encounter when they're coming along. So this is the cell's first chance to make a good impression and identify itself. Two ways that this happens is through glycolipids and glycoproteins. Anytime you see glyco in bio, think sugar. Glyco means sugar. So glycolipids and glycoproteins are lipids or proteins that have got a little carbohydrate flag on it. And that flag identifies them as what they are. So the outside of our cells are coated with these lipids and proteins that have got these flags that identify the cell as being a heart cell or a stomach cell or an antibody or whatever else. So this is kind of like the cell's calling card system or one of those cheesy little name tags that you have to wear when you go to a mixer or a party or something like that. I don't know if this would be the most important function of the cell membrane, but it is quite possible that it is, and that is selective permeability. Our cell membrane is like a bouncer. It keeps the things out that should stay out, and it keeps the things in that should stay in. Now, on the side there, you see a little diagram that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. I'm going to go into depth in a second. But a couple of the things that are and are not able to easily pass through the membrane. You'll see over there that non-charged molecules, otherwise known as nonpolar molecules, can easily cross through the membrane. Water is able to get through, though water does so slowly because it is charged. Most charged molecules, they're not able to cross the membrane. That's because these heads out here, they like water. That's fine. They're cool with the charge. But the tails on the inside, remember, they are nonpolar. They don't have any charge, so they don't want to have anything to do with these charged particles. And because all these tails don't want anything to do with the charged particles, charged particles generally can't move through. And if you're a big old honking macromolecule, you're not going to be able to easily get across the membrane either. So let me go on to another slide and probably just reiterate everything I just said. Generally speaking, know these two things. Nonpolar molecules, carbon dioxide, and oxygen cross easily. They don't need any transport proteins. They don't need any tunnels. They can just diffuse across the membrane. If you are an ion, which means you've got a positive or negative charge, if you are a polar molecule, you are going to cross slowly or not at all. The bouncer doesn't like your clothes. He's keeping you out. So what happens in these cases? We've got some gatekeepers that help out with the process. And these are going to be integral proteins that cross across the cell membrane. And what they do is they help the things to get in that need to get in, and they keep things out that need to get out. So in the case of the top one up there, he is an ion pump. Um, he pumps charged particles across the cell membrane. There are other ones that act like little tunnels. You'll see the middle one on the bottom of the facilitated diffusion looks like a little tunnel. There's one like that called an aquaporon that lets water rush into the cell or out as needed. So these guys are like little tunnels. Each one is specific to one type of molecule. So the molecule will come along. He's got his little identification card. He presents it to the protein. The protein says, sweet, you can come in. Wrong molecule comes along. He's not going to be able to go through the protein. So these are our gatekeepers that allow things that couldn't normally just diffuse across the membrane to get on through. So I hope that you followed with me as I went over some basics about the cell membrane. We'll look forward to seeing you again on the Lab 207 webcast. Have a good day.